Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw the face of a wolf. Uh, what I've done here is drawn two perfect squares. They're about four centimeters on each side. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is zoom into this uh, lower square so that we can get to work on the face itself. All right, so I'm going to begin by drawing the eyes, and um, what you're going to want to pay attention to is the the size of these circles uh, compared to the square itself. They're they're quite small, and um, you know I don't know if I want to go so far as to give you a measurement for them, but that's part of the reason why I do things like draw a perfect square like this, just to help you sort of uh, see the distance between the objects and so forth. So uh, we have these uh, the two circles for the eyes, and the interesting thing about a wolf's eyes that I noticed as I was studying um, sort of photo reference is that there's this area around the eye itself, a, a dark black area that has this interesting shape. Um, those of you who are experts in wolves, please chime in in the comments section. Let me know, is there a name for this area? Because I don't believe it's part of the eye itself. It's the surrounding black area, and there may even be an, um, you know, uh, an explanation for how it helps uh, the wolf see or whatever, but it certainly looks cool. And that's all that I care about for today. So notice the shape of it and how it's kind of curving down and that there's this uh, this little hook here at the end. Again, I have to be careful because there's got to be different varieties of wolf uh, that they aren't all exactly the same. I should be careful about making it sound like this is the way to draw all wolves. Um, what I'm going to do, because this is going to be more or less the same thing, I'm going to go into time lapse just to draw this uh, the same way on the other side. All right, so we've got this area kind of shaded in on both sides, and it's time to draw the pupil of each eye. Um, uh, what I noticed uh, was that the pupil itself uh, reminded me a little bit of the, the, you know, kind of pupil of a human eye in terms of the proportions, but um, the in the photos that I was looking at, uh, the pupil was very near the top of the circle. Uh, almost sort of joining with it a little bit. And, but you'll notice I'm leaving a, a, a sort of highlight area at the top of the pupil that's, a, a, you know, representing a shimmering light of some kind uh, uh, that makes the, the, will eventually make the eye look shinier. Again, in time lapse, I'll go ahead and repeat that over here. All right, so you may have to refine these a little to get them to match one another. It's always a challenge. I hear from, from people saying, you know, I can draw one eye, but then I try to make the other eye match, and it's... Uh, there's no silver bullet solution for how to solve that problem. You just have to keep working at it. Uh, in any case, it's time to move down to drawing the nose. And what we're going to do is shoot all the way down to the bottom line of that box, that first box that we drew, and uh, try to get a sort of gently curving area that comes in like so. I would say that it's about a third uh, of the square, maybe just a touch over a third. Um, you know, for the distance from uh, across this line here. And uh, it's time now to finish off the nose itself. Now what I had, I had to sort of struggle looking at uh, different photographs of wolves' noses to sort of observe the details, because they are kind of jet black, and very often a photograph won't pick up the full details of it, but I was um, able to observe in at least one of them the, uh, the structure of the nose. And uh, if I was looking at it properly, it's, it actually sort of opens up on the sides, comes in and um, you get a couple of circles here, right, that are the, the actual nostrils. And in between them, a line uh, that's sort of dividing this. Now, it doesn't go all the way to the top. It sort of, you know, peters out as it uh, reaches the midpoint between them. But, but what I noticed is that, you know, the, the, the nose is curving down. This lower part here is more or less horizontal. Um, and then uh, this area over here sort of curves down, and that becomes the actual structure of the nose. Now, like I said, in, in a lot of photographs, this get, as this gets colored in and is very dark, jet black, you will barely even see the details of this, but I thought it was worth, at the beginning, sort of showing you uh, what the structure was. Now, um, I guess I can go in and sketch a little bit of the dividing lines that you're eventually going to see. This has more to do with uh, the, the patterns of the fur, and again, I must assume that different 
uh, types of wolves are going to have different uh, patterns of fur, but I'm going to just go ahead and draw uh, in here the um, a line that is going to help us separate out uh, uh, the sort of darker fur from the lighter fur. And uh, you'll eventually see that uh, on this side over here there's a patch of white, uh, basically. And that uh, the, the line here is showing me where I will uh, want to be putting some you know, gray fur. And uh, eventually I want to focus on the the direction that all these various pieces of fur take uh, as they, um, you know, cover the face, that that can be quite a challenge because you know, they, they do sort of shoot off in different directions. But before we get onto that, I think I've got enough space here with the, the way the camera is focused to draw the rest of the mouth. So let's go down here underneath the nose. Um, doing a gently sort of frowning looking uh, line. It's kind of funny that I'm saying frowning because as I looked at photographs uh, and studied this, it does sort of curve up. There's a, uh, an area here that normally, you know, we human beings would look at it and say, he's smiling. The wolf is smiling at me. Uh, which is not the case, uh, I don't think, unless, I don't know, I mean, you, you'd have to ask the wolf. Are you, hey, dude, are you smiling? What is this? What's with the curving line going up on either side? But um, uh, I found that indeed, looking at a great many photographs from this point of view, the line of the mouth does uh, kind of curve up. And uh, you'll see later on when I go to the, to the shading part of the video that this area ends up being quite dark, kind of blackened. And uh, the last thing to put in here, although I, f I fear I'm getting down to the bottom of my video, um, hang on, I'm just going to shift the focus for a second. Just wanted to make sure that you would see uh, the extent of the, the bottom of the mouth here. And that basically gives us the details of the face. You know, uh, a lot of it comes in with the shading later on. But let's pull back, refocus, so that I can show you uh, where the top of the head and the ears come in. So what I'm going to do now is um, extend this line across uh, that I had here initially. This is going to just sort of help me figure out how to place the ears, right? So this line goes across like so. Now the one other thing, uh, if you can, is just sort of estimate a, a repetition of that square uh, over here, right? So you get around the same thing. And uh, you can drop in another line uh, like so, and um, also over here so that you, you basically uh, get one final set of guidelines here for uh, drawing the ears. Now I know a lot of people hate to draw guidelines, and if so, just skip that part. Just stick your fingers in your ears and say, this this can't be happening. He's not drawing more guidelines. It's not, no, there are no more. He's done. Um, but I do find them useful for making sure that I see the spaces between things. Now I'm drawing the top of the head here, sort of an unusual um, curving uh, shape that comes to a little bit of a peak as it nears uh, the top of that um, first box that we drew oh so long ago, way back at the beginning of the video. And uh, it's time now to finally move on to drawing the ears, the moment you've all been waiting for. Can he do it finally, the ears? Now, if you see where there's this intersection of those two lines, that's going to help you maybe see where the ears, where one of them anyway, begins. Um, of course, you want to focus on the uh, angle of this line. And then maybe uh, in terms of figuring out the extent of the ear, see where this uh, the second line comes in. I would say about two-thirds of the way across there. Uh, that is where we're going to have that ear uh, come to an end. And, you know, have it kind of curve up here. It's not going to come to a super sharp point. It's sort of a, what we would call a rounded point. Oh, boy, here I am having to refocus probably. Hang on a second. Just wanted to pull back so you could see the full extent of it. But yeah, it's, it's not coming to an absolute point. It's sort of a curved point up here. And as we come across here, you're going to find that, um, you know, there's very, very tiny little fur, uh, bits of fur that cover the ear towards the peak. But as it comes down, uh, we get the fur, the each piece of fur. Does that make sense? Piece of fur uh, getting longer and longer and sort of fanning out the lines uh, coming horizontally out here at much greater lengths. And then, uh, as I said, they, they get smaller and smaller as it reaches the peak of the ear. Now, again, this uh, uh, involves repetition here, so I'm going to go ahead and do this other ear in time-lapse. 
All right, so we finished both of the ears, and uh, I'm going to come in here and show again, you know, sort of focusing throughout this drawing on the length of the fur, because it is quite different lengths on different parts of the face. But we get a lot of vertical um, fur coming uh, up the, off the top of the head, um, sort of at a mid-length, not super long, not super short. And, uh, you know, looking at this, someone might look at this drawing and say, boy, it looks a lot like a dog. Uh, rather than a wolf. But uh, the truth is, as I studied uh, photographs, uh, and indeed dogs and wolves are related, uh, you will find that uh, there are, you know, it's uh, very subtle differences, I think, between a, um, a dog and a wolf's uh, face uh, when it comes to doing a drawing of one. Now, what I'm doing here is adding um, a sort of a dividing line that shows, again, where I'm eventually going to be shading in um, uh, a gray area versus a white area. And uh, so these two lines here especially. And I noticed in some photographs that there was an area above each eye that almost looked like an eyebrow, um, almost like a human eyebrow. Uh, but maybe just a, a sort of a dark area. I don't believe it, uh, you know, serves the same function as an eyebrow. Who knows? Again, if you know more about wolves than I do, and I'm sure you do, it ain't saying much because this guy knows nothing about wolves. Um, tell me about that if you have also observed this sort of black uh, eyebrow-like area above each eye. Well, we're getting to the point where I want to start talking about the direction of uh, the fur on the head. And I'm going to do this kind of quickly and show you how uh, you're getting a lot of small, short, vertical lines here. These are not the final lines. This is just kind of to show you um, the direction of things. Maybe I should zoom in a bit more so that you can see this more clearly. So yeah, as I studied these photographs, I began to try to get a sense of what direction the fur goes in so that, you know, you're not just sort of randomly uh, filling this in with lines. But uh, certainly we get a lot of vertical um, uh, line fur direction right here across the upper part of the snout. And then it begins to uh, fan out in these, uh, you know, uh, different directions uh, heading gradually uh, off to more of a um, horizontal uh, direction. And in fact, I would say based uh, on the photographs that I saw that it's the, the lines have gone horizontal even by the time they're above the eyes, just as, a, you know, sort of a guideline. And uh, again, you're focusing, you will be focusing on the length of these lines. Um, very short right here, especially as you come down the snout, and then uh, getting longer and longer as you reach the top of the head uh, and head out towards the uh, extremities of the face. Um, by the time you come out here, again, you're getting very long, not super long, but uh, uh, midway long, I guess I would say, uh, lines that are gradually beginning to um, point down in a uh, sort of curving vertical uh, uh, direction. And the farther you go down, the longer these um, lines of fur get. I'm going to make sure I don't go past the um, limits of what the camera can see right now. So let's go ahead and while we're down here, I would say the very shortest pieces of fur are as you come down across the snout toward the nose, and the, the, the fur gets so uh, short, each individual, you know, piece of fur, I don't know what to say, like um, hair? What? <laughs> I don't even, of course, you never know. You never know what the words are, but the, anyway, the lines that you're doing to represent the fur here become very short indeed, all across the snout. And as I said, there is this sort of um, uh, dividing line across here with the snout of uh, uh, darker lines that are, um, uh, you know, almost you're just sort of shading in, I'd say at this point, an area that's darker versus an area over here. And I'll go ahead and erase that guideline so you can get a sense. This whole area right in here, uh, at least again in the photo that I studied, uh, it had a much lighter, whiter area. So you're going to see that uh, I'm leaving this 
area very blank. Now, happily, in terms of saving time on this video, uh, a, a lot of this is sort of mirror imaged over here, right? So I'm not going to sort of repeat the whole drawing process over here. You can imagine it uh, being repeated. But I want to talk about one last thing before I think we're going to have to kick all of this into time lapse. Uh, to do some, you know, to sort of finish off the shading. Uh, but there, uh, in the photo that I studied, uh, there was a white area below and above each eye. So this area here just uh, uh, across the bottom edge of the eye, and then um, kind of coming up here uh, above that um, eyebrow-ish area was a secondary uh, white area. Area. Again, there's got to be different patterns for different, uh, you know, breeds of wolf. But uh, I find that it, rather than trying to do a generalized drawing of a hypothetical wolf, it's best to, to try to uh, emulate one particular breed, you know, again, basing it on photographs. Uh, it, that's, you know, there are no hard and fast rules. Maybe you want to draw sort of a fantasy wolf that is not um, specifically based on uh, any one breed. In any case, I think that kind of finishes up what I'm going to be doing here. I suppose I should have talked more about the ears. Maybe I can come in at the end. I'm going to come in at the end and talk about uh, the patterns of the ears. But for now, let's kick it kick it into time lapse to uh, uh, darken this up. And people are always asking, what pencil do I use? It is called a black Prismacolor colored pencil. Uh, that's the pencil I'll be using for some of the darker lines. And of course, this uh, Dixon Ticonderoga is the pencil I've been using all along uh, for the initial uh, guidelines and so forth. But enough of me jabbering already. Let's get on to the time lapse part of the video where I'm going to do all of the shading. All right, well, there's my video on how to draw a wolf. Uh, uh, of course, I went through an awful lot of stuff in time lapse there. If you would like a separate video that covers just the shading, um, by all means, let me know about that in the comments section. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about the ears. You'll notice that there's sort of a dark area in the middle. I think that's just the interior of the ear showing through. And then this eerie area here, Uria, a little lighter, and this area back here a little darker. But let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. We've got the Minky Falls graphic novel series, Brody's Ghost, and also Mastering Manga, my instructional how to draw manga book. But I think that's all the time we have for now. Let's go ahead and lay down the pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.